Gwen and welcome to my new channel, How to Art. This is your channel. You decide what you would like to see and I'll demonstrate it for you and how you can do it yourself. In today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching an easy acrylic painting. Don't get too overwhelmed. I'll go step by step. Don't worry. For this tutorial, I've chosen something simple. A cat looking through a window. And so let's start. So what you'll need first is to turn your um, whatever you're using to paint on um, vertical, which means up and down, like so. I'll just my camera here so you can see it better, but it's like so. And what you want to do is, I have my picture right here. I'm not going to be showing it the whole time because I would like you guys to focus on which lines I'm making and not the whole picture itself because the whole picture might overwhelm you guys. So what I would do is since the window here, this line right here, is halfway through the paper, I would make a halfway mark. To show where the cat is going to be sitting. So the head sort of peeks up over here. The cat is not directly in the middle, which is the middle is here. But she's not directly in the middle. So what I would do is I would say she's slightly this way, so her head is going to be right here because she's not in the middle. She's not in the first quarter of the paper, which is here. So I would say she's right here. So what we're going to be doing is just draw a nice circle. Her head sticks out to the middle of the paper, so draw her, her head like so. So it looks like that now. So what you can see also is this line right here is the other side of the window. So we need that line to determine where the window, window sits. Um, the other line for the window is a little bit slightly off of her head so that she's not sitting on the line directly. You can extend these lines all the way down to about almost the end of the paper you want a little bit of room to leave the ledge of the window. I'll just draw like, like this. So sketching is an important part of painting because you want to know where you paint. Um, I noticed that this is a little bit higher, so that's okay. Just bring the line up because you want to make a little cube of the window. So this here, this part is okay because it's a long part of the window. Sorry guys, I did not know that did not show. But I will fix that right now. So what you do is you have this line here because just to show the picture again, why not? The ledge right here, this ledge is this line, this top part and you have the little squares. I notice it's a little bit skinnier, and it's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. I do too. Painted a while, but still make mistakes. Because, again, it's not accurate. So you bring this a little bit. It doesn't have to be accurate. So you bring this a little bit over here to make it another line, because you obviously saw there was another line. I almost messed that up. But you bring that down here. And just so you don't get confused, erase this line. So what you want to do next is it's a little bit further so that you can see a square still. I didn't see that part. But again, this doesn't have to be accurate. It's your painting. We want to erase that. So now what you want to do is you have sort of her outline. But what you want to do is bring a line down, almost at like a little angle, but not really like an angle, and you bring it like so, just so you can see her sides more, and you want to bring another line, sort of a little curve right here, and then down here and down there. 
taking a long part time on the sketch right now, but it will be worth it in the end because you will have the most accuracy. So you just sketch like so. Now you have the figure of the cat. And her tail is coming up a little bit over here. But not much. So just do it like slightly. There's a little room under the thing that's where she's sitting. That's okay. Then what you want to do is do this part, which is under the window ledge. This is just the little angle that the window meets the wall ledge. And you have to have that part so you can get more focus on it. Then just draw one more little line here, one more little line here, and we're almost done with the sketch. And for the last part of the sketch, we want to do some little, little cute ears. Just tiny little ears sitting on top of her head. You guys are doing great so far. Great job. Okay. Now, you should see, basically, in your mind, a black and white image of the painting. And we're ready to move on. To continue on, for the next part, you'll be needing a brush. I'm using a 7 flat. You can use any type of brush, it really doesn't matter. I usually use this kind of brush though. You need a napkin to wipe off your brush, see? And you need, if you don't have a, just a palette where you can mix your colors on, I like to use baking paper water. Uh, five different colors and your painting. So I like to use red, blue, yellow, white, and black because red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors and these are the different colors. Black and white is, this makes it lighter, color lighter. This makes your color a little bit darker. So starting for this, you see in the picture there is some green. Well, you can't really see, sorry about that. There's some green and some yellow. I usually like to start on the background because then the figure in the front pops out more. So it's all propped up. So now you can see. So in the, in the, right here, this part, I forgot one little thing with our pencil. Sorry about that. But right here, it's a little bit of the window ledge still. Okay, moving on. Black. Shake up your color. You always gotta shake it up so it doesn't have, um, different textures. Um, so, I'm gonna do a nice little drop of black. Not too much, it's very potent stuff. Now, shake up your white. You're gonna need a lot of white because it changes the color to be a shade lighter. This point does not look out. Okay. okay. So, just a lot of white. What you want to do next to make green, you need yellow and so just put some yellow on your paper. Okay, as you can see I had a technical difficulty with the yellow. For the next part, we're going to use the blue to make the green. Shake the blue up, and hopefully it doesn't go everywhere this time like the yellow did. But put some blue on your thing. Now, you want a medium color. So you take some of the yellow, a dab of yellow, you put it over here. Take a tiny bit of the blue just to see what it will do. And there, there's a green color that is almost perfect for our medium color. It's a little light, so add a tiny bit more blue. It's tiny, not a lot. So there's some green now. 
There we have some green. So that'll be good. So to make it a little bit darker, you take a tiny bit of the black, only a tiny bit. See how there's only a tiny bit? And you spread it on to the yellow. And now we have a darker color. And this is called a tone of the color. Um, now if you want a little bit of a lighter color, which we'll need anyways, you take some of the white, a little bit of the white, and you put it down here. And there is an, a lighter version of the color. And a little bit of blue got into that, but that's okay. So now we have this. We have a bunch of different colors. You take some more of the black, because it's a little bit more of the black, the, the darker color in the beginning of the picture. But there we have another different color. So we take the color we just made, the really dark color. Take the really dark color. Take that dark color and give it some trees in the background. Just some nice little trees. And right there. So now we have a bunch of different colors. Now what we want to do is because this is like a faded out sort of blended mixture, we take this, we rinse out our brush. Rinse out your brush nice and good. And what we want to do, dab it on the paper towel. It's okay if there's a little residue. And you mix it in a little bit more. Getting a nice medium color. Then you dab it on here. Well, you see here there's not really a difference. So you want to go down with the color. Just put the color on the brush. Come back here and dab it around. Now that we have a little bit more tree space, dab it around. Dab it around. Get a little bit of the lighter color. Mix some white into that. Make a lighter, lighter, lighter color. And come back to the painting. And just nice little dabs of paint. And make sure to go to all the spots where I'm putting the paint. Unless you want different type of trees. Then do it your own way. That's okay too. Um just put the paint nicely where all the trees look like they're coming from. Your blue, tiny pinch of blue. Right here, grab some white, mix that together, and you have sort of like this. But if you wanted a gloomy day, a tiny bit of gray, I mean black, sorry, black, and it will tone down your color. So then you have the gloomy day, like it's on the picture. Um, then you take that and you go around and you dab it in. you have the whole sides covered. So you can see here all my sides are covered. Um, you just take that, flip it around, and we're ready to start filling in these lines right here. So what you want to do for the lines 
Um, I think they're just a little hint of green in them, some black, and some grayish tones. Um, it's mostly black though because it's a darker thing. Okay, so what you want to do now is work on these lines. You can faintly see them. That's the lines that you still want to have. I'll show you the lines right there. You can see them. Um, you want that to be a little hint of gray, see? But, um, take your black. Actually, we have black on the table, so don't use more than you have. So rinse out your brown white. A little bit of white. You want enough actually to cover the entire lines. So this is where you're going to put the lines in. What you want to do is take your white, take a little bit of black, just like that much on your brush, and fold it into there. I would say a tiny bit of your green. It just looks like it to me. It's okay if it doesn't look like it to you, but it looks like it from here. Tiny hint of green. A little bit more black to make the second color. There, actually, there's the color we want. The second color will be a little bit darker to make it the shadowy part. Yeah, that little darker part, the shadowy part. Take this white and put that right there. Take a tiny bit of yellow, like so, just a little dose of. Take a tiny bit of your gray, just because we don't want it that bright of a color. We want it neutral. 
neutral wall looking color. It's a neutral wall color. See? It's sort of neutral. If you want for the shadowy parts of the building, do more of this color. And then add that. So there's two different colors there. Now what you want to do, take a look at your painting. Take that color, brush it on it. Just a hint of a grayer color to indicate the line of the wall right here. So you just take that, indicate the wall, just indicate it like that. By adding another color to it, you indicate some of the wall textures and you also. I think a tiny bit more white to it, just so that it looks more like the wall color again, because I accidentally added a little bit of green. If you're already happy with your color though, that's okay, and you can keep it the way you want it. So we have that, we have the wall. We need to take the gray again. Rinse off your brush first, actually. I always forget sometimes. Take that and just take your brush. Take this gray part, gray that we used. Just bring it over slightly because this indicates that it goes into the wall, like so. So then it looks like the window again. If you want to indicate this a little bit more, that's okay too. Just indicate that. And what you want to do now is, in the picture, there's a little bit of shadow. So take a little bit of your darker color, mix it with that white that you put the wall with, and give it a little bit of shadow right there. Just because that little shadow indicates it's a 3D object. With shadows, you just take a little bit of the dark color, lighter color, and mix it on. And what you want to do after that is just fill in that line that got a little bit messed up, like so. Now that you have the shadow, you have the, the windows and everything, we want to move on to the next part, which is down here. It shows you take right here, really thinly, just slip, just rinse out your brush, like that, and if you have a nice clean brush again, take some of your white, just a really bright plain white, like this, just a nice plain white, sort of like that, tap it on the edge where the black, the gray meets the lighter color, like so. Take some more of your stony color, like so, and just take half of the brush this time. Not the full thing, half of it, and go right underneath that little layer you just created. This is another part to the window, so. So just take more of that color, come on the other side, and do the same thing. Sandwich those colors together, put the white in the middle of the gray.
um, just take the white, I noticed, take the white and go slightly underneath it, making a slightly larger line than that one up there. In a second, slightly, slightly that line. like that. Now it looks like a little bit of a window sill is there. Um, if you want to go take your black you, or the gray you just made, a little bit more white, like that. Take that and mix it in to make a really, really light gray. Like sort of like that. Yeah, that works. Like that. A little bit more white. So, make it a little bit lighter. Like that. And what you want to do is just where you were, make that line right there. Just a nice little line.
take that white, just the plain white, and just to see where your figure is. And come out here with a little bit more white. Not too much white, like a little bit of gray. And just give her some more shadows down here. Put it here. Or anywhere you have room, you can do. That's just where I have room right now. On my paper. Take that. And just outline wherever you see me outlining right now. Or if you want to go back into the picture and do that, it's okay too. Fold thing over until you sort of get a clean brush, but you don't really want a clean brush too much because you want to take this white and just give her some more definition.
going to do now is just give her a little more definition with some white. So I would give her some more definition right here. Looks like she's more fuzzy. Just a little bit. And right here. So it looks like this part's a little bit more fuzzy. And I would also give her some fuzz down here. 